These are extreme manifestations of what is typically referred to as hurry sickness, a state of anxiety caused by the feeling of not having enough time in the day to accomplish everything that is required. While most of us, thankfully, are not prepared to commit mayhem when things don't go our way. Many of us have a serious problem dealing with events that knock us off course. Interfering with our goals. Some of us pick up this habit in college. Waiting to write that term paper until the day before it's due. Pulling an all-nighter. And going to class bleary-eyed. Bedraggled. But smugly self-satisfied that another challenge has been successfully met. You've got motion. Sickness. Not the kind that causes queasiness when you react to the rolling of a ship but rather a physical and psychological dependence on motion and speed that can become almost as powerful as a true addiction. Symptoms include nervousness, depression, fatigue, appetite, swings, compulsive behavior, repetitive actions that are difficult or even impossible to stop, unwillingness and even inability to stop working, inability to relax even when you do stop working. That's not good. But it's not lethal. But keep driving in that fast lane until it becomes a way of life and you run. The risk of hypertension, heart disease, migraines, insomnia, digestive problems, stroke, the stress of rushing through life suppresses the immune system, hampering the natural formation of T lymphocytes, white blood cells and leading to increased susceptibility to infection and cancer. Point eight reports of the death of work. Premature in an article in a 1959 issue of the Saturday Evening Post. Highly regarded historian and social commentator Arthur Schlesinger, Jr. warned Americans of the onrush of a new age of leisure. Warned. These prognostications remind me of the executive at Decca Records who turned down the chance to sign a garage rock band from England because guitar music is on the way out. The band was the Beatles. And they did okay with three guitars and a set of drums but by and large most of us decided to work more rather than less. And more of us went to work. So that instead of the age of leisure we created the age of anxiety and the norm of the two income. Household. You can only do more work with more time. Effort. And energy. And that time. Effort. And energy have to come from other parts of your life. Like conversation. Sleep. And play. We abhor the notion of wasting time and speak of saving time and spending quality time as if as the adage has it time were money or at least a commodity like money capable of being either stashed or squandered for example you might write i'm trying to learn to spend my time wisely or i found that i can save time by making a to-do list every morning before work or i tend to waste time after dinner Go ahead and take a moment to write a few. In our examples above, we'd get, I'm trying to learn to spend my life wisely. I've found that I can save life by making a to-do list. I tend to waste life after dinner. 11. The point to this little parlor trick. 16. Health. Department of Health and Human Services found that the average number of hours worked annually by workers in the United States has increased steadily over the past several decades and currently surpasses that of Japan and most of Western Europe. Surprisingly, a study by Dr. John Robinson, director of the American's Use of Time Project at the University of Maryland, and Dr. Jeffrey Godby, Professor of Leisure Studies in Penn State's College of Health and Human Development indicates that our free time is increasing as well. Our jobs create stress and probably always will. There is more to do than time in which to do it even though we're working longer hours.
Our supervisors are stressed and pass down their stress. Industries continue to be in flux as mergers and acquisitions remain commonplace. And positions are unstable as businesses adjust to changing market conditions and increased foreign competition. Do we spend half our free time in front of the television because we are too tired to think of anything else to do and even if we could too tired to do it? This part of the exercise can be very illuminating. As the numbers you gather here may confirm why your spouse keeps telling you to come to bed. We'll all have eat on our lists of basic time consuming activities. But again, you may want to split food time into regular sit down meals. Eat and run drive through raids on nutrition and foraging or snacking or noshing or whatever you call it. Nobody has to see your log. And you have the power to change anything you don't like about the way you live and to decide to embrace anything you do. Public opinion. Spouses accepted. Be damned. If an adjustment leaps out at you now. Note it in a fourth call UMN. New ideal or time management goal. Estimate ideal actual new ideal video gaming 7. 4.2%. 3. 5, 2.5. 2.1%. 42.25%. 10.5. 6.3%. Then write the adjustment you intend to make in the form of a declaration. I will play video games no more than one and a half hours a day. Or, I will average no more than ten and a half hours gaming each week. Congratulations, but there's much more you can do. If you're willing to help yourself spend time wisely and well. Not to satisfy the numbers on the chart. But to create a joy-filled as well as productive life, diligence in completing this exercise should provide an accurate and graphic picture of broad categories of time use. A study that you can use to make general decisions about which activities deserve more attention and which deserve less. You are getting about 8 hours of sleep most nights. Harmonizing hours at work with hours at play. Devoting a worthwhile chunk of time to family and friends. Spending time exercising and eating healthy. Doing everything, right. But for all your effort, you don't seem to accomplish what you set out to do. Those who have least to do are generally the most busy PEO play in the world. Samuel Richardson, 1689 to 1761. British novelist most workers believe that it's important to look busy to their bosses. And far too many bosses feel comforted when their direct reports appear as if they're working. Hard. In too many cases then. Busy. Is an unacceptable substitute for productive. Some observers have suggested that busy work. Is a creation by upper management made necessary by modern business organization structure to occupy middle managers. However, it does appear to be reinforced by the frequency with which large corporations, in an effort to reduce expenses and improve their bottom line, lay off a significant segment of their middle managers and continue to operate seemingly without interruption. Whether busy work is an operational tool created by upper man. Agement to help maintain the pyramidal organization structure. Or a device employed by the individual to avoid other more important tasks. It reduces productivity in direct proportion to the time it consumes. We feel the stress and pressure of attempting to fit all of our busy work tasks into their allotted time slots but don't have the sense of accomplishment that would result from completing essential duties. So it may seem like busy work, and you can waste a great deal of energy and time fighting it. But the fact of the matter is that it needs to be completed. We are guilty of performing busy work if we have chosen to avoid more important, goal-related, and potentially difficult assignments by burning up time on tasks that won't matter when they're 
completed. It's possible to spend a lot of time perfecting the appearance of a report. Selecting fonts. Laying out pages artistically. Using graphics. But if this report is an internal document and the readers will be concerned only with its content. Then the effort of page beautification is pointless busy work, in a lot of cases. Though, you get to judge a task's value. Determine how much effort to put into it. And 29 reap the appropriate rewards when it's completed. Even if those tasks that currently occupy our time are not on a critical path within our most important project. We can find enough reasons for continuing to do them to satisfy ourselves. Our flaws. In this case at least. Are the inability to fully understand our goals. Translate those goals into tasks. And prioritize those tasks in a logical way to accomplish the goals. We may find ourselves well on. The way to accomplishing important work only to be ambushed by minor concerns and insignificant duties. So that at the end of the day, we feel tired but unsatisfied with the previous 8 hours of frenzied activity. If it was, there wouldn't be so many books and magazine articles and workshops designed to help people who are frustrated because they can't seem to manage their time. Our cars can park themselves. We can pay for someone to 35 stand in line for us. And can use a cell phone to find the nearest restroom in a strange city. Thereby improving our way of life. Among these tips from the expert. Lucy Hedrick, author of 365 Ways to Save Time. Is, if you don't have time for reading, letter writing cooking or exercise. Get up earlier in the morning. This seems to be a favorite time management solution. Some of you need to impose strict order on your workspace. A place for everything and everything in its place. With neat files. A clean desktop. A floor you can actually walk on. Take an hour of work home. Read less than five minutes. Talk to your spouse for four minutes. Exercise less than 3 minutes. And play with your kid for 2 minutes. David Allen's Getting Things Done. The Art of Stress-Free Productivity offers a complete system for capturing and dealing with every task in a straightforward, prioritized manner allowing us to eliminate clutter and stay focused. When you try to get more done. In the same amount of time. She counsels. You run the risk of overload, a phenomenon known in computer lingo as thrashing, when the computer gets too many commands at once and gets stuck trying to decide what to do first to do before work exercise. 100 sit-ups, 50 push-ups, 25 squats review agenda and materials for staff meeting read the Wall Street Journal morning commute. 17 minutes. Listen to motivational self-help CD on morning answer faxes. Overnight mail. Voice mail. Email. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Staff meeting. 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Organize research for quarterly report. 10.30 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. Drive to lunch meeting. 15 minutes. Lunch meeting. Noon 1.30 p.m. Afternoon write draft of quarterly report. 1.45 p.m. to 3 p.m. Meet with committee on workplace expectations. 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Afternoon commute. 18 minutes. Pick up dry cleaning. That's it. In a way. The serious sickness is easier. Because you don't have to decide whether or not to attempt to go to work. And you don't have to feel guilty about staying in bed while the rest of the world is tending to business. Let's suppose you're sick enough to have to stay flat on your back in bed for two days. And you can barely wobble around the house in bathrobe and slippers on the third. You've got 138 messages on voicemail. 62 of them from the same person. 178 emails. 
52 of them copies of replies and replies to replies by multiple recipients on a single question and a desk awash in memos faxes mail and other unnatural disasters in the top of the fifth inning of a 0-0 tie with dodger a sandy koufax on the mound davis managed to make three errors in one inning including two on the 47 same play to blow the game something might be gaining on you god give us grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed courage to change the things which should be changed and the wisdom to distinguish one from the other you have to be able to change it digress from it flip it on its ear add to it wad it up and toss it in the recycle bin if it's really going to help don't do it first simply because it's there demanding attention or because it's relatively easy or because you've gotten into the habit of doing it first in fact it's essential to break down a large task into small tasks to understand 49 what steps are involved and in what order they must be completed in order to finish the larger goal if one of your tasks is writing a product development plan for example and you know the amount of time and effort it will consume defining the parts of the plan will make it much more controllable a word of semi-serious caution here which is best stated by glasses corollary of murphy's law if of the seven hours you spend at work six hours and 55 minutes are spent working at your desk and the rest of the time you throw the bull with your cubicle mate the time and be ready to abandon the list if you only write the story that is planned, writer and teacher Eileen Honeycutt tells her students, you miss the story that is revealed. The same goes for the story of your life, for a delightful depiction of the dangers of developing list addiction, which surely must have its own 12-step programs and support groups by now. Read a list one of arthur lobel's delightful frog and toad stories for children point five one other items include getting dressed eating breakfast and going for a walk with frog disaster strikes when a gust of wind snatches the paper from toad's hand and poor toad finds himself incapable of acting without the list to guide him if you find yourself spending too much time making and revising the list for example or if you never refer to the list once it's completed then the to-do list may not be for you jump start each work session writer's block gets the most press but folks encounter executives block and plumbers block and computer programmers block two that state of semi-paralysis brought on by fear and pain and just plain old lack of desire. 8. Ways to get a fast start 1. Prepare mentally back at the turn of the century. A man named Charles Hanal called the subconscious mind a benevolent stranger. Working on IF you can't answer these questions. Save yourself time and effort. And ensure that you'll do a better job by taking a few moments now to get the information you need and to focus on what you hope to accomplish if you're good at your work a professional in the best sense of the word whether or not you're getting paid your mood doesn't 59 show in the finished product but when a quarterback throws an interception every football fan in the stadium sees him do it and more will see the replay or read about it and there's no way he can pull the ball back and take the play over. There's no time for a redo. There's barely enough time to get it done the first time. And we feel the eyes of the boss or customers on us as we work our way through a challenge. As difficult as this may seem for people who were taught to be perfect. We must realize at, e at some point that our best intentions. Planning. And efforts count for nothing if the job doesn't get done. If you can't finish the job in one sitting. 
You work until you're exhausted or until you run into a snag you can't work your way through. This is a technique used by many successful writers who would have a significant problem starting up if they hadn't stopped while on a roll. There is an exception to this rule and whether the rule or its exception applies to you depends on the type of person you are and how you tend to work through problems i knew one fellow who did his best thinking while running he'd break from a task when he hit a snag go for a run and by the time he returned he typically had found a solution you charge from meeting to meeting appointment to appointment with no time to gather your thoughts you've taken lunch at your desk so often your keyboard's clogged with crumbs the ringing phone makes you jump you feel one bad surprise away from throwing up your hands and screaming a long time friend calls to tell you she's coming to town and would love to see you but you make excuses because there's just no way you can spare the time you aren't getting any exercise but you feel exhausted you crawl into bed at last and can't fall asleep in private with your feet up and your eyes closed would be nice of course but you can take a breath break in the middle of a meeting behind the wheel of the car or on the phone you may feel goofy the first few times you try this but once you've mastered the technique you'll return refreshed after just a couple of minutes and you'll know you can go back again soon you're going to have to build these breaks into your daily routine and you'll probably even need to plant reminders in the form of a note in the briefcase a post it on the monitor a reminder in your computer calendar in another study The attitudes in the American Workplace 7 survey sponsored by the Marlin Company and conducted by Harris Interactive in 2001. A third of workers said their jobs were harming their physical and emotional health. 42% said job pressures were interfering with their personal relationships. In this study, 50% of workers claimed they and their fellow workers had a more demanding workload than they had a year ago and nearly that percentage said they have too much work to do and or too many unreasonable deadlines by using an organizational scheme that captures our personal and work tasks defines the steps of those tasks and defines our priorities We can take much better control of our lives. Point 7 to recognize the reality we face many tasks from the small and insignificant oiling that squeaky hinge on the bathroom door to the major and consequential making an important presentation finding a retirement home for dad all of these tasks compete for our attention and while some may be more significant than others The health and happiness of dad should take precedence over a noisy door. After all, they all are part of the nagging undones that crowd our conscious and unconscious minds. It also means that we are likely to be thinking about the upcoming presentation during a golf game and how to correct that nasty slice in the middle of a staff meeting. confront the reality that we have many requirements on our time interruptions are a given and unless you're living the rustic life of a reclusive shepherd that work family friends and community will continue to demand our attention in unplanned ways at inconvenient times capture the tasks having recognized that we probably have more tasks than time in which to do them and that new demands will arise before we've had a chance to finish the old we need to apply a control mechanism maybe you're the best parent and or spouse on two legs and don't wish to cheapen the time you spend with your loved ones by labeling those experiences as tasks and scheduling them on the impersonal medium of a task list collecting this master set of tasks as super to do list in whatever format you choose 
will undoubtedly represent a major effort, but is a step that you may not need to repeat if you maintain the schedule part discussed below. Unfortunately, however, the classic to-do list does not permit an understanding of the task, nor does it accommodate a plan or acknowledge what resources, such as time, are necessary to accomplish it. If you don't know where the oil is, or if you don't have any oil, or if there's a white carpet under that hinge and you are incorrigibly messy, then the job involves more steps and is going to take much longer. In fact, it is only by breaking down a large task into small tasks that it's possible to understand what steps are involved and in what order they must be completed. If one of your tasks is writing a report, for example, and you are enthusiastically avoiding the project knowing the amount of time and effort it will consume, defining the parts of the report will make it much more controllable. Large tasks will require more time to complete, but that does not necessarily mean they should receive priority or be scheduled in your prime time. Small tasks can and should be completed quickly, but they should be prioritized using the same rules as the large tasks. Figure 8.1 A grid made popular by Stephen Covey may be helpful in forcing you to ask two questions about each task. Figure 8.1 Ken Blanchard In his book, The On Time, On Target Manager, How a Last Minute Manager Conquered procrastination developed a variation of this grid. Shown in figure 8.2. If you use 1 through 10, you can be more precise. But it may not be worth the extra effort in distinguishing between a 6 inches or a 7 inches when a simple A, B, C, or D will suffice. You will also find that as you weigh the importance of a task, Rereading some old magazine articles. For example, you will change that task to a more practical one, such as discard old magazines. Schedule at this point. Your tasks have been captured, defined, and prioritized. This scheduling is a commitment to yourself and to others. By showing that you have a plan for each task and have allotted time, G A T O R G A N is A D next. Take your highest priority tasks. Those you've objectively determined are most important. The as and b's. And schedule each one. Assigning a fixed slot with beginning and ending times. If you rely on project management software. For scheduling of complex projects. Then your personal planner should at least reflect your time commitments. Even if the particular task is not specified. If you attempt to cram a two-hour task into a one-hour time slot on your schedule, you will not be able to complete it and will end up rushing the task. Cutting corners and quality. Ideally, you will be able to shift responsibility for a low-priority task to someone else. If not, move the due date to a time you can accommodate or reduce your involvement to a manageable level. As we've seen from the exercise in the previous chapter, you can and need to determine the importance of those questions in order to keep your life in some state of control. We're not suggesting that you give a great deal of conscious thought to whether you should brush your teeth, or what toothpaste you should use, or which hand you should hold the toothbrush in, or which quadrant of your mouth you should brush first. And oh the havoc when, for example, you develop carpal tunnel syndrome in your dominant hand and have to try to learn to brush your teeth wrong-handed. But if you're making all of your decisions by rote, you're probably not making the best decisions for yourself. You may have to make the decision to answer a ringing telephone without the most important piece of information. namely. Who's on the other end? But let's make it easy by giving you caller ID. Let's suppose that the caller is your significant other. 
hereafter referred to as the so the man or woman you share your life 85 with the single most important person to you on the face of the planet you are at work and you're awfully busy right in the middle of something important on deadline and well truth to tell you wish you could know what the conversation was to be about before you committed to getting into it right but through the magic of the hypothetical case i'm going to tell you exactly what your so wants to talk about and then let you decide whether to pick up that phone or let it ring through so is calling to tell you that he seems to have lost all feeling on the left side of his face and he feels as if he might pass out any minute the health and safety of a loved 187 is at stake or at least seems to be and there's no way you take a chance with something like that and the situation demands immediate action the problem for most of us occurs in categories b and c the important but not urgent and the urgent but not important specifically you may be spending too much of your time doing the c's and not enough time on the b's so it's necessary only to point out here that life is full of a series of rapidly occurring urgencies that really don't make any difference in the long run or even in the short run for that matter but the department meeting is a fat waste of everybody's time including the person running it 90 minutes of plodding through announcements you could have read for yourself or chosen to ignore unless we take conscious control of our decision making we'll tend to react to the urgent even if it's relatively unimportant and shun the important unless it also carries a sense of urgency asking the want to have to question if all this business of dividing activities into four quadrants on an important urgent grid seems like a lot of work and it is here's an easier way to begin to gain control of your daily life simply stop what you're doing take a breath and ask yourself the following is this what i want or need to be doing right now you can of course modify the question to fit your own circumstances and your approach to life note that it's or not and obviously a task can be a long way from what you'd really like to be doing and still be the thing you need to do it may seem amazing to you but if you consistently practice the want need question you really will catch yourself doing things you can't justify doing on any grounds and you'll find yourself shifting activities to better serve your needs knowing when time isn't really the problem to get the whole picture we need to reiterate one more element here isn't always a matter of time at all why you'll never be able to find time time only needs managing because we don't seem to have enough time to do everything we want and need to do if you want to exercise 3 times a week if you need to do some long range career and financial planning if you care enough about another human being to want to nurture your relationship you will schedule time for these things the one on one meeting the single greatest potential time exploiter for most of us comes in the form of the colleague who discovering he needs some last minute information to finish his current task telephones or stops by and asks the simple question got a minute we can normally sympathize with this colleague because we frequently are guilty of this behavior as well you can follow it up as well as soften an abrupt and seemingly insensitive response by buying a little time can i get back to you in about half an hour quote or by setting a specific time to talk you still don't know what the conversation is about or how long it will take and you still don't know if you really want or need to have the conversation at all the golden rule apply to three little words if you practice effective responses to got a minute long enough
you'll train some of your frequent interrupters to ask the right question in the first place. A question that will supply the informality and you need to answer it. We prefer. At least for the time being. The ability to make eye contact with our colleagues. To see and judge their expressions and gestures up close in a face-to-face. -face. Live context. If the report you've been working on for two weeks must be circulated at close of business today, you really don't have the luxury of spending 97 three hours discussing a new project that may not be your responsibility anyway. Attendance is expected at your department meetings. For example, and when your manager puts you on the list for a meeting, You'd better have a bona fide reason that he will accept if you plan to skip. Maximize your meeting. Productivity since meetings are a part of the work environment. And you know how to diplomatically avoid those that result in a net loss of information and or kill brain cells. You are left with the responsibility to attend an abundance of meetings. Don't waste time on visual. Aids if they're not visual and dramatic, if they are hard to read or understand, or if the information is more effectively rendered in written handouts, if one or more employees are continually idle, it may not be their fault. They are either more efficient than you thought, or they just don't have enough work to keep them busy. As a manager whose task it is to promulgate company policies, Objecting to or resisting these changes is not only a waste of effort, but also a sure way to destroy your image as a team player. If you have input in the decision-making process that results in the adoption of new methods, it behooves you to raise the issue of time as a factor. Too often it is overlooked in the organization's zeal to reap promised rewards, separate the Important from the merely urgent for your staff for your staff. As for yourself, you need to distinguish between truly important activities, those that serve the central mission, and the stuff that seems to demand immediate attention without really meriting it. Tell them why. Why do I have to do this? If that question from a staffer feels like a threat to your author 80, if you become defensive when you hear such a question, your staffers will learn to keep the questions to themselves. If your coworker is on the phone with a potential client, you want that worker's total attention on the task at hand, not thinking about the next project or the last project or the work that isn't getting done. Point seven. Have productive staff meetings ask your staff to make a list of things they least like to do when Chances are, go to a meeting, will rank right up there with, take work home over the weekend. Most of us hate meetings, and with good reason. You're community-minded, a team player, in sports parlance the, go-to person. But you may be doing more than you should, for your own physical and mental health, for the well-being of your loved ones, and for your ability to be effective and efficient. It's difficult to say, no, when someone asks you to serve on a not-for-profit board, or chair a committee, or attend a fundraiser for a very worthy cause, writes Jan Benson Wright, editor of the Peoria Woman. If any of these motivations apply to you, and you're able to admit it, you may be saying, yes, because it satisfies some need or quells a fear more painful than the loss of time from accepting more duties. It's an especially insidious disease. Because the impairment is so gradual, the victim is often able to make subtle, unconscious compensations for a slowly shrinking field of vision. Becoming aware of the disease only when it's too late to treat it. It's not too difficult to refuse. A huge, overwhelming load of additional responsibilities. It's tough. However, to decline, just one more. Add up all the extra tasks you perform. Anything above and beyond what's required. Here's the start of one person's list. 
coach AY basketball team chair the workplace expectations committee at the office coordinate United Way fundraising in the department serve as recording secretary for the church council and on and on you also need to figure in jobs you've taken on that rightfully belong to someone else not some generic other person who could take over as committee chair if you stepped down but the specific person whose job you've shouldered this calculation enables you to make adjustments in next year's giving bringing the level up or down to where you think it ought to be and redistributing funds according to your shifting awareness and priorities learn how to play golf learn new skills to help me advance at work get more sleep master conversational spanish earn an mba have people over for dinner at least twice a month perhaps you don't really want to learn spanish you simply wish you knew how to speak spanish on the first pass through assign a number from 1 to 10 for each on the enjoyment scale 10 being highly pleasurable and 1 being pure drudgery then go through again assigning a number from 1 to 10 on the importance scale 10 being crucial to the survival of the human race well maybe not quite that important one being nobody really cares a hypothetical list of activities might look like this activity enjoyment importance coach ay basketball team 97 chair the workplace expectations committee at the office 24 coordinate united way fundraising in the department 18 serve as recording secretary for the church council 55 just looking at the numbers It seems we've got ourselves a basketball coach here. Here are some examples. New activity old activity exercise on the treadmill. 45 minutes every morning. 45 minutes of sleep chair the neighborhood recycling committee play with my kids on those Saturday. Mornings join a book discussion group. 2 hour meeting watch television. 3 hours each month. 10 hours to read the book. week the first trade off exercise for sleep may not be a good deal although it's one that many of us happily have made but you might choose to spend less time with them by default without realizing you were doing so when you take on the socially worthy work of being your neighborhood recycling za be with he automatic yes You may have gotten into your time crunch because you have a very hard time saying no but you've learned by bitter experience that it's much harder to get out of something later than to turn it down now but we write memos letters work orders presentations directions equipment orders job evaluations responses to job evaluations resumes contracts and a lot of other attempts at assembling words in a logical order so they'll make sense the sense we intend for the reader get off to a flying start formal outlines are a waste of time unless the outline is going to become part of the document or if that's how you happen to think best it is also helpful in the hands of an accomplished user to capture the ideas of a group of people during a brainstorming session and to share those ideas with others you'll need to go back and edit of course but the time it takes to key a rough very rough draft and then edit it will be less possibly much less than you would have taken pushing your way along word by tortured word trying to create perfection as you go You'll create one by keeping a pad of paper with you as you edit the next couple of pieces you've written, noting the sorts of mistakes you tend to make, the need for speed, enabled by the email medium, encourages us to write without considering a message's effect on the recipient ENT, on others who receive a copy, or on others are known to you who may be copied now or at a later time point 10 ways to reduce control and eliminate paper 
Adopt a constant companion. Keep a notebook or planner with you all the time. In your attache case, in your desk drawer, in your coat pocket or purse, on your night table. But as long as you know where everything is and can lay your hands on it, without having to wade through the stuff you don't want, you're in good shape. Point three. Touch it once. How many times do you pick up the same piece of paper? Glance at it, scowl, and toss it back on the desk, promising yourself that you'll deal with it later. Your choices are: reroute, pass it on to someone else who should have it, respond, then file it, read, then file it, recycle, as in throw it in the recycle bin. One hundred and thirty-five four. Exercise good swordsmanship. You should have three labeled stacking trays on your desk. In this tray is for mail and memos when they first arrive. Make it disappear. There's only one thing better than getting rid of it as soon as you touch it, and that's never having to touch it at all. Create a speedy response. A personalized sticky note, a note written on the bottom of the original letter or memo, a half sheet, a business letterhead for a short note, a phone call or email, if appropriate and more efficient. Are you being callous by sending the correspondent's own paper back to her? Schedule a short filing session once a day, a week, or month, depending on the volume of paper you're dealing with. For a time when you're not at your mental peak, about the time you got to school each day, you'd start waiting and wishing for recess, and then lunch, and then the magic hour of three o'clock. Time to go home. We wait for the coffee to perk. Wait for the bus to come. Wait for somebody to unjam the copy machine. Wait for the client to respond to our voice mail message. Wait for our luncheon date. Wait in traffic. Wait at the doctor's office or the quickie lube, which can never be quite quickie enough. Time passes slowly at these times, not because we are anticipating the joy of good surprises under the Christmas tree, but because we've been displaced from our schedule and really should be somewhere else doing something different. You may not afford your plumber many status points. But you'll wait for him or her indefinitely as you keep swapping an empty bucket for a full one under the leaking water pipe. First, if you haven't allowed sufficient time for waiting, the wait will destroy your schedule and cause you to be late for other appointments and to fail to complete necessary tasks until you get home and can finally kick off your shoes and put your feet up. Or until the kids are fed and bathed and storied and put to bed, or until the weekend, or until the vacation, or until retirement, or you haven't really committed to doing the job. If you were to attend a workshop for would-be an beginning novelists and ask them why they want to write a novel, a project that demands a huge commitment of time, energy, and emotion. Most of the answers would fall into one of three categories. The second set of reasons basically cluster around the notion of communication and storytelling. I have something to say, and a novel seems to be the best way to say it. Or I've got a story I want or need to tell. Some folks even say that the story seems to be using them to get itself told. Point one three four said I'd make a good. Novelist, one might say, or folks in my book group think my life story would be inspirational, assuming that they aren't being coy, that they don't really mean. I think I'd make a great novelist, or I think my life story would be inspirational. An appropriate response to this sort of reason borders on mom's old admonition: If somebody told you to jump off a cliff. Would you do it? The key here is the source of the motivation. But the more the motivation comes from the English teacher or the book club or the mate or the boss or any other external source, the less likely we are to do it. Even if you can see a benefit to doing the job, 
you may still decide that the costs in time and energy and the other things you aren't doing outweigh the benefits for most of us won't is a lot easier to deal with than can't if you don't try it you don't have to confront the possibility that you can't do it fear of success on the other hand if you do pass the course folks will expect you to do it again or to go out and get a job or to apply what you've learned first time through this definition may be negative if i don't clean out the rain gutters i'll get a flood in the garden the first time it rains hard positive motivations tend to be much stronger i'll finally stop worrying about it i'll get some nice exercise out in the sunshine i can listen to music while i work are these considerations enough to move the task up the list reason 4 you don't know enough to do the task when a writer gets writer's block it's often the subconscious mind's helpful way of suggesting that he doesn't really know what the hell he's talking about learn to discern between the legitimate need to gather information and a stalling mechanism whereby reading the book or going to talk to the guy at the hardware store is simply a way to put off confronting the job you may be distracted by ringing telephones or other people's conversations or you may spend time performing such mindless tasks as reorganizing your desk drawer or making lots of unnecessary trips to the restroom or copy room there will be times you need to pull in all nighter but making the effort to get a regular night sleep on a regular basis will make you much more effective during waking hours the rewards can be no more than an extra 5 minutes of break time but they support behaviors you're trying to adopt and even minor bonuses will be positive and worthwhile reinforcements if you're having trouble with a particular class with study skills or some other problem seek out assistance as soon as possible before the issue gets out of control everyone who was involved in the creation of the specification or who will use the specification knows this but will embrace some of its inaccuracies to the bitter end fighting for the errors of his choice for simple projects there may be only a few straightforward steps for large projects the steps may need to be broken down several times and the linking can become complex if we stopped to consider how much time it will take to perform the research we would have a better idea of how long it will take to produce the report this often requires a global view the manager needs to be aware of outside demands on team members and most importantly to take advantage of individual strengths and build skills within the team for future projects if you are working with your own personal set of skills you should be realistic in understanding how to take advantage of your strengths and accommodate your weaknesses to accomplish your goals if you don't have the results of previous projects to use in estimating the current one then you're left with trying to guess time requirements as accurately as possible problems have been known to occur in the best planned project so it's wise to build in some slack so it doesn't blow your schedule out of the water it should be clear that better understanding of expectations and processes greater cooperation and communication additional commitment to the outcome greater utility of resources and of course superior time management signal better project management and better results these programs can for example maintain a calendar of meetings and appointments as well as a to-do list keep group contact lists manage email make and file notes and help manage projects software can provide definite productivity gains if the installation and configuration stages a properly managed initial data entry is not 
excessively time consuming updating and maintenance of data as convenient the learning curve for new users is not overly steep the software is stable and available crashes are infrequent users consider the output valuable a complete description of all software packages available as beyond the scope of this book information capture sharing and development software the following programs help with idea management mind manager mindjet has more than 70% of the pc based market and more of the enterprise market for mind mapping software which allows the user to capture organize and share information a means to organize ideas you start with a topic and add branches as you mine your idea its integration with fast track project management software allows those ideas to be incorporated into a project act management framework how to eliminate unnecessary steps i'm so busy doing the dance a worker laments i haven't got time to learn the steps let's free up some time by eliminating some of those steps the ones that aren't getting you anywhere if you find yourself engaged in completing filing sorting searching for or trying to find room for paperwork that serves no purpose other than providing work for someone else then perhaps you should seek an alternative if you follow procedures and fill out forms that are destined to be sent to a morgue where they will never again see the light of day You have an obligation to try to change the procedures that are wasting your time. Two more forms of unnecessary work, busy work and work avoidance work in a lot of office settings bosses create busy work for subordinates rather than have to face the prospect of figuring out something real for them to do or to endure watching them play computer solitaire. Webcasting certainly keeps you busy. You're undoubtedly learning something although it's a plea cation to the workplace may be tenuous and once you learn to find your way around you start having a wonderful time this list does not unfortunately include i don't want to or i don't like to or even it's not in my job description although this point probably should become the subject of a future planning discussion with your supervisor delegating swapping and letting go once you determine that someone else should be doing a job you're now performing you have three options for getting someone else to do it some folks have other folks to open and sort their mail for them too and make the coffee and fill out all those stupid forms and a lot of other less than glamorous tasks this may stem from a lack of trust in the subordinate of course a bad situation for a variety of reasons but the inability to let go may not have anything to do with anybody else as you plan and direct your workflow get used to the idea of using three rather than merely two categories do it now do it later and do it never deciding to do it never isn't at all the same as simply not doing it if you toss it back on the pile and push it to the back of your mind it will continue to clutter your physical and mental space and it will need dealing with all over again because we can edit so easily because we can always surf for more information because we can run one more set of data at the push of a button we may raise our quality expectations until we reach such lofty and utterly ridiculous pinnacles of perfectionism as zero tolerance for error we might as well ban that horrible time waster the bathroom break tis one of life's little ironies by the time you get old enough to stay up as late as you want to you're too tired to stay up late but ever since thomas alva edison finally found a filament that would get hot enough to glow without burning up We've been able to defy the cycle of the sun, keeping ourselves awake with artificial light. Point one nine four of digestion.
with the power breakfast and the working lunch and the business dinner if we become tired at the wrong time like in the middle of the afternoon staff meeting we fight off fatigue with caffeine or sugar or both overriding our need for rest most of us have developed a daily cycle involving one long block of time from 6 to 9 hours of sleep and two or three meals the largest coming at dinner time sometimes these four sources agree you love apples science says apples are good for you and folklore teaches an apple a day keeps the doctor away and aside from the scare over the pesticides society seems to approve of apple eating i've heard this addiction described by someone who would no as more powerful and harder to break than the physical dependency on heroin powerful enough to keep people smoking even after they've developed emphysema or lost a lung to cancer then women gained equality you've come a long way baby when the medical evidence against second hand or passive smoke began to become pervasive and persuasive Many municipalities banned smoking in restaurants and public offices and legal efforts to prevent sales of cigarettes to children intensified 0.198 but a combination of the body's initial reaction to smoking and a dispassionate review of the evidence on smoking and health can tell us what's right for us even if we don't always do it given the difficulties in knowing what's right and the inevitable clash between what our natural rhythms tell us and what socially enforced patterns dictate you still might be able to alter your living pattern so that you're living more in harmony with your internal music here are a few possibilities we didn't even learn about a phenomenon known as rem for rapid eye movement the stage of sleep during which dreaming occurs until about 30 years ago a discovery that derived by the way from the observation but even here the conclusions are murky because some of the same bad things happen if you let folks sleep but deprive them of their dreams another feat of cruelty accomplished by rousing sleepers every time they slip into the rem cycle but allowing them otherwise to get their normal sleep Thomas Edison is often cited as an example of a highly creative and productive individual who thrived on 3 or 4 hours of sleep a night. Although revisionist biographers have suggested that Edison took a lot of naps, and some even suggest that his alleged nocturnal habits are folklore. Folks have very different natural cycles. Some are simply more alert late at night and have a terrible time trying to fight their way out of deep sleep when the alarm clock rips the morning. Others claim to be able to teach you the techniques for lucid dreaming, conscious awareness of the dream state and the ability to change the plot line and the things that go wrong in the night one. Insomnia is by far the most well known and common. disorder preventing you from getting your sleep so come on in fact that most of us will suffer from it at one time or another 206 as the name suggests sleep onset insomnia involves difficulty in falling asleep while terminal insomnia which sounds a lot worse than it is manifests in waking up too early and being unable to get back to sleep most of us don't keep twitching and starting and otherwise thrashing around during the night because of a little switch at the top of the spine that prevents us from acting out our dreams 2086 steps for getting a good night sleep if you encounter sleeplessness in the form of onset or terminal insomnia or both you may be able to treat yourself with one or more of these remedies nutritionists chime in with The advice that we'll process and use nutrients most efficiently by eating the big meal in the morning and then tapering off during the day and by eating several small meals rather than two or three large ones. 
If you tend to follow one schedule during the work week but depart from it drastically for weekends, you may well have trouble falling asleep Sunday night and even more trouble dragging yourself out of bed Monday morning. Don't worry about it there's nothing worse than lying awake thinking about how awful it is that you're not sleeping, how much you need that sleep, how bad you'll feel tomorrow if you don't get to sleep. If you're concerned that a chronic lack of sleep may be robbing you of efficiency and alertness, hurting your relationships, perhaps even endangering your long-term wellness, first get a clear idea of 211 how much and when you're actually sleeping now. Now you're ready for a chat with a sleep disorders expert who may have some immediate suggestions for you or may suggest an overnight stay at the clinic for a thorough monitoring of your sleep. You know you're too stressed. The test continued. If you can achieve a runner's high by sitting up, the sun is too loud. You begin to explore the possibility of setting up an IV drip solution of espresso. You believe that if you think hard enough, you can fly. Antacid tablets become your sole source of nutrition. You begin to talk to yourself. Then disagree about the subject. Get into a nasty row about it. Lose. And refuse to speak to yourself for the rest of the night. You find no humor in wasting your time reading silly. You know you're too stressed if. Dot quote. Lists. Enter into a relationship with another human being. Get out of one, or avoid a relationship altogether. You open yourself to increased stress no matter what you do or don't do. List a few of the everyday things that people do to bother you. Things like cutting you off in traffic, emptying their car ashtrays in the parking lot, butting in line at the market, trying to buy more than 12 items in the 12 items or fewer line. Talking loudly during the movie. Chewing with their mouths open. And on and on. Point two two zero stress happens one more plunge into the stress scale to pick up another insight. Into stress. Change of financial status. 61. Spouse begins or ends work. 58. Change of line of work. 51. Change in residence. 47. Change in number of arguments with spouse. 46. Change in eating habits. 29. Change in sleeping habits. 27. Change in recreation. 26. Lose your job or get evicted from your apartment. Your goal, then, should be to live in eustress as much as possible and to take especially good care of yourself. During those inevitable times when you must exceed your safe stress limits, our battle cries include. You can do more with less work smarter. Not harder a leaner workforce is a more efficient workforce. Thus the terms, downsizing, and, right-sizing. You can put these bromides on the list of, great lies of our time. Right alongside, the check is in the mail, I'll still respect you in the morning. And, I'm not selling anything. You have to anchor stress to lose stress before you begin your strategic retreat. From the stress wars. One final visit to the stress scale. Where, nestled between, trouble with boss. 45. And, trouble with in-laws. 43. We find, revision of personal habits. 44. When folks like Whitkin, Holmes and Rahe assign points to various stressor. They are at best predicting the response in the average person. That strange being who makes $32,914 a year, has 1.782 children, and doesn't, in fact, exist. When the going gets tough, Dwight Eisenhower once assured us. The tough get going. This can mean although I'm sure Ike didn't intend this interpretation, that if the going gets unbearable, you might need to get going out the back door for a break before re-entering the fray. We also show a fundamental lack of respect 
for others if we keep typing while on the phone with a friend or hide behind the newspaper when a loved one is trying to talk to you as a decision you must make. A big one. Should I stick with the security of a regular paycheck or start my own boosiness? Quote. Or a small one. Should I order the double cheeseburger with fries or the salad with low calorie dressing? Quote. 2.232 Although the worries in the third category tend to be much larger in scope. They are also less immediate and therefore take up less of the warrior's psychic energy than do. More immediate concerns, like the question of what to have for lunch. You may think you're worried about the coming con. Gressional election or the sorry shape your public schools are in. Laudable concerns. To be sure, when you're really worried about a mole on your neck that suddenly changed shape and turned red, ask. What's the worst that could happen to me? If you eat that cheeseburger and fries, you'll consume about a week's allotment of fat, along with an enormous number of calories. Actions you might take regarding the business. Presentation include hitting the internet to gather data, practicing in front of a sympathetic audience, faking a sore throat and going home sick. Asking someone to make the presentation for you. You may decide to do nothing because you feel that nothing you can do will help the situation or because the costs of any action you might take outweigh the potential benefits. Now tell yourself, whatever I decide will be fine. Tell yourself often enough and you'll begin to believe it. Not because you've brainwashed yourself but your intuition will recognize the truth of the Statement. Invention often comes from dogged determination. As when Thomas Edison tried out over 700 different materials before discovering that tungsten would glow without burning up when he allowed an electric current to pass through it, such breakthroughs come from the subconscious mind, which a man named Charles Hanal called your benevolent stranger. Working on your behalf, we all get them. But we may have shut ourselves off from them. He knew that the problem would lodge in Thay. Subconscious of at least some of his advisors. And when the brainstorming began on Monday morning. They would surprise him. And themselves. With insights they didn't even know they had. A casual conversation overheard in the elevator. A remark made over lunch. A small item on the back pages of the newspaper. A report on the evening news. Suddenly the world seems to be conspiring to feed you information to help you. But there are only so. Many pretexts for sending Tonto into town to get beat up. And only so many disguises for the Lone Ranger to don. After a time striker began to run dry. This grid or matrix system works because inspiration often. Occurs when an idea or image from one frame of reference collides with an idea or image from a totally different context. Creating something new, surprising, and original. Step 5. Stop before you have to if you can't finish in one session. Break while you're still in the midst of creating ideas and certain of where you're going to go. Next. If you wait until you're stuck or seem to have exhausted all the possibilities. And then stop. You'll carry a negative impression which can grow into dread and create a difficult startup time. When you return to the project. Nonsense lest you think this process sounds a trifle touchy feely. Something right out of the hippy dippy 1960s. Know that people like Charles Hanal were working with these methods at the turn of the century. And Dorothea Brande spelled out a similar process for writers in a book called Becoming a Writer in the early 1930s. At the same time, women began giving public expression to the notion that being just a housewife didn't allow them to develop fully or to take their place as equal partners with men in society. Instead of quality. Time. We simply have less time. And what time we've got is really pressure time. 
If you honestly believe that you can schedule a meaningful conversation with your adolescent son or daughter, or that lovemaking by appointment doesn't lose a little something in spontaneity, then you've bought the quality time concept. If you aren't spending much time on family or spiritual life or health maintenance, for example, then maybe these aren't really the most important things in your life. Somehow you're supposed to devote more time to family without taking a minute from work. More of that, you can do more with less nonsense. The underpinning for a belief in quality time. Live a values-centered life you aren't a monster or even a hypocrite. Would you turn down an offer for a new job that paid more money if it required? Frequent travel and meant that you would be away from home for substantial periods of time?